Hi, this is Miss Litton, and this is seventh period review for unit three. three. Ah. If that's a mutation, <laughs> where would that have originated from? In the DNA, right? Which would have been transcribed into the RNA. What kind of RNA? RNA. Which would have been interpreted on the ribosome, ribosome which is made out of RNA, RNA and proteins. Into what? <laughs> Using tRNA to transfer the amino acids in order to build your protein. Okay, I'm probably saying that would be called the central dogma. It's a three headed dogma. All right. Um, first, first essay relating to this unit, most rapidly. Okay, so this one says all new cells come from previously existing cells. We know that due to the cell theory. And this process of cell division, which involves both replication of the cell's nucleus and division of the cytoplasm. Oh, replication of the cell's nucleus would be referring to what's going on in the division of the nucleus. What would we call that? Mitosis or meiosis. And division of the cytoplasm is called cytokinesis to form new cells. There are two types of nuclear division. Name and describe each stage of mitosis and then meiosis. Please describe the importance role of meiosis in gamete formation and variation in sexual reproduction. So stages of mitosis. What would those stages be? Really? G1? No. Anaphase? Prophase? Metaphase, anaphase, that was terrifying. Okay, that is mitosis. Cytokinesis would happen simultaneously during what? Telophase. Good. What happens during prophase? Chromosomes become visible. The nuclear envelope, nucleolus disappear, radiating microtubules, asters. They meet in the middle at metaphase. Who meets? And it's just sisters, right? Okay. They meet in the middle at metaphase, away at anaphase, two nuclei at telophase, cytokinesis. Good. So if I had a cell that had four chromosomes in it, what would, if my 2n number equals 4, what would metaphase look like? Talking about mitosis, Pete. It's just like this. Yeah. Like this. Right? Four chromosomes in the middle if my 2N number was four. 2N, it means a diploid cell. A haploid cell is just N. Right? Okay? If I'm talking about myomyosis, -my still part of A here. Okay, I would have meiosis one, which would have what? Uh, Interkinesis, then meiosis two, which would have. Do you see what I'm doing? Yeah. Why am I doing this? Because you have two cells. I have two cells, right? You with me on that? Yes. Okay. What would meiosis 1 look like if I asked you to draw a cell <coughs> whose 2n number was 4? What would meiosis 1, I'm sorry, metaphase 1 look like? You agree? Yes. What would metaphase 2 look like? Got that? Yeah. Does that make logical sense to your large mammalian brain? Yeah. Okay, good. Oh. <laughs> All right. But you know what? There's value in the struggle. I could give you all my notes done, right? That, that wouldn't help you. Yeah, get a diploid cell. I could have said the same thing 
All of this would be true if all I gave you was this. Drawings didn't change a bit. Because I just said n equals 2. So that would imply that 2n equals 4. You should be able to figure all of that out, right? OK. Now, the second part of the question says, please describe the importance of meiosis in gamete formation and variation in sexual reproduction. My oh my meiosis gives us three opportunities for variation. What are those three oper opportunities? Do them in order, crossing over, which would occur during? So phase one. Second opportunity. Independent assortment. Independent assortment, which would occur in? Metaphase. metaphase. What? One. Metaphase one. And then what's your next one? Fertilization. Fertilization. Which sperm fertilizes what egg? You don't know. So those are your three areas for variation. Why is variation so important? We need variation for natural selection. And we need natural selection so we can have adaptation. Got it? Natural selection chooses those adaptations. All right. Can I move on? Yes. Question two. Cancer is a failure of genetic control. What are the general characteristics of the cancer cell? You could look those up. I'm not going over those with you. You can look those up, right? You can say things like multinucleated, not very many cytoplasm, right? All of that. Okay. Number two. What are the two types of genes in particular that malfunction in cancer cells? And what do these genes do in normal cells? What are the two categories of genes we talked about? Proto-oncogenes. And what? Tumor, tumor suppressor genes. OK. Now, we only need tumor suppressor genes if proto-oncogenes become oncogenes, right? You with me? Yeah. We only need tumor suppressor genes if the proto-oncogenes become oncogenes. Because proto-oncogenes are facilitating, if they become oncogenes, then that, are you done? Okay, just one minute, just one minute. Talk about it with yourselves. Go ahead. So I'm gonna pause it so I can see your score. <laughs> What period are you in, sweetheart? I forget. Did you go through? Go through and look at them. Yeah! That's my girl. Okay, that was chapter 10, right? Can you be? Okay, I'll just do it like that. I'll find it. No, I, I'm going to just, I got you. Three. I just want to. No, nope, I got it. I got it written down. Just remind me to to record it. Okay. Thank you. Here. No, thank you. Awesome job. Super proud. Okay. All right. Oh, sorry. I didn't pause the recording, did I? I'm sorry. Okay, sorry. Somebody was making up a quiz. Patience. Excellent. Okay, so proto oncogenes um, are controlling the cell cycle, right? And we talked about how if they mutate into becoming oncogenes, right, then they're saying go, cell cycle, go even though they are not being sent a signal to move the cell forward, right? And so what was a good example, like if I asked you for a hard example of um, a proto-oncogene that can mutate into an oncogene, what would you say? RAS, because it's like stepping on them? Yes. Yeah, yeah, saying go forward in the cell cycle. Now, does that mean we have cancer just because our RAS mutated? No. no. When we have cancer, right, is if our tumor suppressor cells fell, and it grows uncontrollably and then spreads to other locations, right? And then it metastasizes, okay? But um, tumor suppressor genes, their job is to stop the cell that's out of control, fix its DNA, and if they can't fix the DNA, then what? Apoptosis. Kill. Yeah, apoptosis. What is our hard example of a tumor suppressor gene? P53. 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 
Yeah, and so that will code for things like cast, well first, it will code for proteins to stop the cell cycle, right, through activating, I think it's P21, but it will also um, control for, remember, the friendly ghost? Caspase. Caspase is to cause apoptosis, all right? Okay, so, done, four. State the conclusion reached by Mendel. What are they? Law of dominance, law of segregation, law of independent assortment. Then you would explain each of those, right? Okay, and then um, explain how each of the following deviates from these conditions. Autosomal linkage deviates from independent assortment. Because independent assortment would say you could have any combination of alleles together, right? Big A with big B, big A with little, right? But if the genes are linked, then they're traveling together. Okay? How does sex-linked um, inheritance deviate? What what one does that deviate from? Law of dominance. Boom. <laughs> law of dominance, right? Because normally, in when we talk about the law of dominance, it would say you need two recessive alleles in order to express a recessive trait, right? Because they're on our homologous pairs. But the exception for sex length is males only have one, one X and they express it whether it's dominant or recessive. You all right with that? And you would give me a hard example of each of these, okay? A hard example for autosomal linkage would be hair color and eye color. Dark hair, dark eyes, light, light hair, light eyes. Okay, um, polygenic inheritance. What, what one does that not obey? Now everything does segregation except non-disjunction, which is a failure. Dominance. Law of dominance. Good job. Because we saw when we looked at polygenic inheritance, multiple genes, you have A's, R's, P's, Q's, whatever, giving you your one trait. It's not a solid. Remember I told your intelligence isn't big S, big S, super smart, big S, little S, semi-smart, little S, little S, super stupid, right? There's S's, Q's, R's, P's that give you your trait intelligence. Okay, I think there's some more exceptions on another question. Here it is. Discuss the variety of gene interactions listed below. Be sure to explain the inheritance pattern as well as give an authentic example of each. Incomplete partial dominance. That would be an exception to the law of dominance. Duh. Okay, red flower, white flower makes pink flower. Not that red is dominant over white or white is dominant over red. Um, they're both expre expressed. Epistasis, again, doesn't matter that black hair is dominant over brown hair if you don't have the gene to have hair, right? If you don't have the gene to have hair, who cares what color it is, right? So the black and brown are not going to apply because the epistatic gene is gonna control. Or um, if you don't have the, let's say, that's a little bit weird one, but let's say um, you will default to albino whether or not you have the black or brown if you don't have the gene to lay down any pigment. Does that make sense? That's a better example. Okay, pleiotropy. Yes? Um, so epistasis breaks the law of dominance also? Yeah. Okay. Because it doesn't matter that I have the gene that I should have black hair, I still have albino hair because I don't have the gene to lay down pigment. Okay, what about pleiotropy? What's that about? Remember what pleiotropy, yes? Uh, isn't it like when one gene can affect multiple traits? Yes, it is. Boom, very well done. Okay, that could be with sickle cell disease. You could look at Down syndrome, right, and the GART gene, and the, all the different characteristics of somebody who has Down syndrome. Multiple gene or polygenic inheritance. What is that? We just did one of those, but what is that? Several different pairs of genes contributing to one trait, right? Like, like skin color, intelligence. Multiple alleles. What does that have to do with? And then multiple alleles is another one on there that I should have on my list that you should know. Blood. What is an example, a great example for two? Multiple alleles. And what else is it a good example for? Uh, Codominance. Codominance. Good. Multiple alleles, because we just don't have big I and little I. We have big I A, big I B, and little I. That's multiple alleles. Codominance, because AB blood both the A and the B are equally expressed. 
You all right with that? Can I move on? Okay. Um, experiments done by the following scientists provided critical information concerning DNA, briefly described each classical experiment, and indicated how it provided evidence for the chemical nature of the gene. You should be able to do all of those. The only one you don't know is Messelson and Stahl. I'm going to tell you right now, Messelson and Stahl, um, uh, Watson and Crick proposed semi-conservative replication. Messelson and Stahl actually showed that to be true through experimentation. <coughs> I'm just telling you that. I didn't lecture on it. I'm just telling you that in case you're wondering. I'm, I'm not going to ask you that one in class. Just a good one to know, though. All right. But the rest you can look up. Seven, describe the biochemical composition, structure, replication of DNA. Be sure to include any enzymes that are required. We went over that today. So you should be able to remember the model where we labeled and drew out the letters and how you would identify each component. And then you should be able to describe replication. Remember, you need to talk about both the leading and the lagging, lagging strain. Okay, and we went over that today in class. Um, number five, des describe the steps of protein synthesis, beginning with transcription, ending with the release of the polypeptide from the ribosome. Include your, in your answer discussion of how the different types of RNA function each process. We also reviewed that today, right? So you would talk to me about the formation of all three RNAs, mRNA, tRNA, rRNA, right? And the role that each of those play. You would talk about when you form mRNA, you would be sure to mention how it is processed. Cap tail, cutting out the intron. You would talk to me about how it needs to go out and get on a ribosome. You would talk about the three areas of the ribosome, right? The P site, the A site, the E site. You would discuss uh, <coughs> codons and anticodons with me. You would talk about the start codon, AUG. And you would say that there are three stop codons. Right, and we reviewed that today as well. Number seven, a yeast cell in early portion of interphase of meiotic division has 24 FGs of DNA, small amount of DNA. I think it's FICO, but I'm not 100% sure. <coughs> Somebody could look it up. Um, if the yeast cell completes meiotic division to form four haploid cell, how many FGs of DNA would be expected in each haploid cell? Well, if your diploid cell has 24, you would expect your haploid cell to have 24. 12. It would only be 24 if we were doing what? Mitosis. But we are doing meiosis forming haploid cells. Okay, um, I'm going to let you work out eight. I don't want to say it ahead of time. I want some of you haven't even looked at these questions yet, so I'm not going to go over answers when you haven't tried it. But eight is one you could work out. Nine is one you can work out, but I also gave it to you in your group shared notes yes. and the answer to that. And then um, this one, um, also try this one and see if you can figure this one out as well. It's all in your potential essay question. I just don't want to take away your learning by doing it for you when you haven't done it first. Okay. And number 12, in E. coli, if DNA, if 24% is adenine, what percentage is guanine? You should be able to figure that out, right? Yes. Right? That's it on the essay. I have an appointment I have to go to. That's it. Okay? You're super smart. Okay, and I hope you're not doing this last minute. And know that I love you and have a piece of toast.